So can you possibly describe what your creative process is for making these comics? Yes, you've got to be extremely bored and then extremely creative and to get out of your board. Quite honestly, I really just like to laugh. And if I can make myself laugh, it's kind of like airplane theory. I take care of myself and then I can take care of you guys. So I laugh first and then I hopefully pass on the laughs to you guys. So how long does it take for a project to start and then finish? About 40 years. I'm 40 cent, no, I'm kidding. Actually, you know, it depends on how inspired you are. For myself, I, you know, I have a lot of these ideas cooking all the time. So it's pretty much like writing a song in the middle of your head and then just coming out with it on paper. Uh, so generally, I would say I come up with about four books a year, you know, but I've got about nine planned ahead of time, so I know where I'm going. What does it take to publish something of this size? Money. Just money. Just money. <laughs> that, that is, seriously, you know. Seriously, a lot of people really try to uh, get their ideas off the ground, and it takes about a, a publisher, you know. But, like, with all the uh, independent publishing companies that are out there, um, you've got Lulu, you've got CreateSpace, really it just takes money. Finish your idea, get it done, get your idea done, people, and then print it up. That's as simple as that. You know, because all this stuff here, I just finished the ideas, print it up, and put it on the table. It only takes one, or 40. What is your most successful project? Right now, it's the Fried Pickle Noir. It's the Sin City Meets VeggieTales, uh, starring Q Cumbersome, P.I., for Pickled Investigator. Consider it to be like mob stories for fruits and vegetables trying to bump each other off mob style. In a seedless city called The Pits. It started off being uh, like a knockoff in the Scary Tales comics, but it just sort of blew up and became its own thing. And like snowballs and, you know, uh, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger going downhill. And do you have any advice for young people who are wanting to come out and make their comic book dreams a reality? Yes. Again, I go back to it. Finish your idea. The world needs new product. They need new stories, new ideas. When Hellboy and The Tick and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came out, no one wanted them because we had Batman and Spider-Man. But now look at it. So, you know, look, you're writing the next comic books, guys. So keep it up, finish your ideas, and print them up. And then you can have a failing pickle, too. <laughs>2002. It's called No Need for Bushido. Bushido is the way of the warrior in feudal Japan. Uh, that is the time period that the comic takes place. Uh, the basic plot synopsis is that a princess from a feudal clan runs away from an arranged marriage. At the same time, the guy she's supposed to marry also runs away from the arranged marriage. Uh, and because they both ran away, they start a war between their two clans. And then they are spending the rest of the comic trying to end the war. And it's a comedy. So, coming out of college, were you guys lost in the whole making a comic 
sort of experience and how did how did you come full circle to this point? So No Need for Bushido is something that I like to consider a hobby that pays for itself and that is just something fun that we did. If we if we absolutely derived no enjoyment from it, we wouldn't actually do it. So coming out of college, we, uh, we do our own things. I'm a web developer. Uh, Alex is a video game illustrator. Uh, so uh, this is not our, this is just an anchor of something fun that we do. Um, going out of college, we realized that that wasn't going to be our entire career.